Watching the world burn, watching the world burn, October 10th, 2023, let's get into it. So the first thing I wanted to, to talk about was uh, how the, of course, the Israeli conflict, uh, it's been horrific to watch the images that have come out, but I wanted to give you some of the, uh, the things that I've been asking about. I always want to say tweet, <laughs> and uh, I just this was one of my uh, my ones because we're going to get into the videos here in just a minute. That no one can condone the evil, horrific civilian atrocities that took place in Israel at the hands of the Hamas terrorists, and that's what you have to call them. However, their geopolitical goal of galvanizing the world against Israeli overreaction by leveling Gaza is taking place. And then I go on to say that over five-eighths, probably even more, of the world now condemns Israel from what I can see as, uh, in the news. They must only target military and not Palestinian civilians. The pictures of dead Palestinian children coming out will destroy Israel. And why do I say that? If Hezbollah gets involved on the northern border, uh, they're much more heavily armed than Hamas was. Then Israel is fighting a two-front war, which could drag in Syria. So then you've got three. And, uh, of course, Iran is, is looming out there on the horizon. Now, one of the other tweets, uh, but I, I do want you to look at, uh, on a completely different topic, because I'm just kind of going through my replies on uh, X. I suggest everyone read Dr. Rand Paul's new book, Deception, the Great COVID Cover-Up. The sheep government-loving Democrats will hate the truth. And I, I remember back at the time, I mean, I, I, people have short memories. And uh, I was calling out Fauci back then, calling him a criminal, uh, a lunatic. Uh, every name in the book on all my videos, uh, my hiking videos, everybody said I was getting political on my video. That's not political. I was just trying to tell the truth. I was trying to tell people to get out of their houses and go hiking. Because uh, that was on my hiking videos, and I'm remaking those videos now without any sort of uh, talk about uh, COVID or Fachi or anything, any of that. Because uh, it's fun to go back and hike those trails, especially you know sometimes hiking the trail the second time and making the video, because you know where the trail's going and you know what it's going to do is uh, even better than the first time because you can talk about things in advance and say up around the corner here you're going to see this, that, and the other. We'll get that on the video. Uh, so I, I definitely outdoors with Kirk. That's uh, me on Rumble. Uh, that's my hiking channel. Now I do post the videos on YouTube. In fact, I'll be po po posting another hiking video after this watching the world burn. So let's just get into the news here. Uh, now if you didn't know, Russia proposed a two-state solution. Uh, they wanted Palestine and Israel to exist as two separate nations. And then of course the United States or Trump wanted a one-state solution where you combine uh, Israel and Palestine into one state. Uh, and of course, Israel has basically just subjugated the Palestinian people. There's so much animosity over there. I don't see how a one-state solution would ever work. Uh, and a two-state would mean that uh, Israel has to give up the, uh, the Western Bank and some of its territory to the Palestinians. And would that... Uh, uh, would that help with the situation? I don't know. I think the hatred is so deep on both sides that I'm not sure where that would go. Uh, but I wanted to get into the uh, the first uh, couple of videos because what we're seeing, uh, and this is what Hamas wanted, is we're seeing a huge overreaction by Israel. And so the images coming out of, of Gaza uh, are pictures of women and children and buildings uh, destroyed uh, uh, you know, uh, is nothing worse than seeing uh, dead kids on the streets. Let's get into that right now. Time they thinking that maybe it's their turn to be killed by the Israeli airstrikes. They live under a state of war as the Benjamin Netanyahu vote his Israeli community that he will let the Palestinians pay the price. But I can say that he just let the civilians who are unarmed people to pay the price. There is none any military sites were attacked by the Israeli. The only facility that were 
were attacked uh, were civilians, mosques, and uh, local and public uh, streets, which uh, which uh, lead uh, to increase uh, the death and uh, the casualties uh, in in Gaza to 436. Now we have 91 children and 63 women. They were killed by the Israeli army. <laughs> Now we can hear uh, the world uh, uh, Israeli player and they are flying uh, at uh, low levels of the, the Gaza sky, uh, sky which uh, push uh, the, the women, mainly the women and the children to be scared all the time and maybe they will be attacked at uh, uh, any moment. The human rights organizations in Gaza said, uh, said that Israel now is committing uh, war crimes against civilians who are living inside their residential houses. All right, so that was the first video. Uh, the other thing I wanted to point out with the Israeli conflict is a lot of those weapons came from uh, Ukraine, we're finding out, and of course they, some came from Iran. Uh, I think the, maybe the drone technology came from Iran. And then you've got uh, Afghanistan, where we left 80 five billion dollars or was it 87 billion dollars of military equipment behind for the taliban and so a lot of that oh miraculously by the democrats by the democrats uh, has ended up in uh, gaza so where did you expect those weapons to go so that's uh, how they, they managed to get armed and uh, I, I encourage you to watch uh, scott ritter he explains how the intelligence breakdown allowed this whole uh, catastrophe to take place because well and I didn't even know, but right now the Mossad is in Ukraine. Project Ukraine has basically devastated the West. So all of the, Israel's focus, or their intelligence focus, was on Ukraine rather than watching what was going on on their borders. Uh, so it was their own fault that this took place. Let's watch the next video on what's taking place in Gaza. As part of its Iron Swords operation here in Jerusalem, we hear fighter jets and helicopters flying towards this trip almost non-stop. The last night was the harshest retaliation by the Israeli army. The IDF now reports that at least 500 targets in the Gaza Strip have been hit, including personal residences of Hamas and Palestinian Islamic Jihad leaders and also military training sites and storages, of course. Roads, mosques, hospitals, even residential buildings are also affected by the air raids. Our colleagues from the ground say no street was left undamaged. And this is actually what the Israeli leadership earlier promised on Sunday. Israel officially declared, uh, declared a state of a war, claiming one of its goals is to completely erase Hamas's infrastructure. But the thing is that it is hard to separate it from any other, let's say, civilian infrastructure as it's weaved into the life of ordinary civilians. And so they uh, turn out to be affected drastically, of course. But the IDF also now reports that they continue to clear the southern towns of Hamas militants who had managed to infiltrate Israel. As you remember earlier, had the army reported that they discovered at least 29 breaches in the fence separating Israel and Gaza. And fear are that the militants are still using these holes to go back and forth and also the idea of suspects that underground tunnels could be used by the militants to enter the Israeli territory and this information is uh, now being investigated we hear from uh, the army so the southern part of Israel remains very tense and not secure at least uh, there are seven locations where there are clashes between the Israeli army and uh, Hamas militants. This is what the IDF spokesperson has to say. We have uh, amassed around 100,000 reserve troops who are currently in southern Israel preparing to execute the task that the Israeli government has designated the IDF to do. Our job is to make sure that at the end of this war, Hamas will no longer have any military capabilities to threaten Israeli civilians with. 
Meanwhile, the death toll continues to rise from both sides. Israel says that it almost reached the number of casualties in the 1967 war, one of the deadliest in the Israeli history. And here in Jerusalem, what we can hear is helicopters and fighter jets flying in the skies, but also there are some incidents on the ground, I have to say. In one of those incidents, Palestinians opened fire at the Israeli military at Kal Landia checkpoint between Jerusalem and Ramallah, the capital of Palestine. The Israeli military fired back. No casualties have been reported. And also later on Sunday, the Israeli police arrested two Palestinians here in Jerusalem who carried a kippah, star of David, necklaces and knives. And the suspicion is that they were planning an attack in one of the synagogues here in Jerusalem and also clashes have been registered in Shuafat neighborhood, uh, which is actually uh, a scene of uh, clashes between local population and the Israeli border police. And also there were clashes uh, between Palestinians and the Israeli military in the towns of uh, Hebron and Nablus in the north of the Palestinian administration. So the situation remains very tense here on the ground, of course, apart from Gaza and uh, the region's border in the strip. So there you go, there you go, there you go. Uh, and then, of course, this is a video on the weapons that came from the West. Let's watch that. Politically influential nations like the US are genuinely invested in peace. And so far, they appear to be more keen on implicating Iran, making bold statements about solidarity with Jerusalem, sending weaponry, or making sort of watery, empty comments about a far off peace, but not taking any concrete steps to force those two sides together. So there is definitely a big discrepancy in the rhetoric. For the Arab League, this is their backyard. They can almost all see Israel from their window. So so peace there, by extension, means peace for them too. For America, though, a continent and an ocean away, the repercussions won't be felt so much. And to be honest, we know that the same goes for the Ukraine conflict too. The attitude has been, you know, throw some more weapons onto the fire, let's see uh, what happens. But as Sergei Lavrov warned on Monday, this uh, constant uh, funding of escalation and war, this dismissal of peace, is not only reckless, but it has really long-lasting effects. The fact that the weapons delivered to Ukraine are spreading all over the world through smugglers and other traders has been a well-known fact for a long time, and we have drawn attention to it more than once in the UN Security Council. So those were some of the key takeaways. Now, Palestine itself has called for a top-level meeting uh, of Arab... All right, so, uh, and then, of course, we've got the next video, which is, uh, this is what I'm talking about is that the world is reacting to uh, what's taking place. And this is uh, the rest of the world burning Israel and American flags. The Middle East and Northern Africa have uh, seen people rallying in support of Palestine in the ongoing conflict. <laughs> It's Morocco, people rallying in the streets, carrying Palestinian flags and chanting slogans in support of Palestinian liberation. But not just there, Jordan as well, where a mass of protesters converged in front of the Israeli embassy in Amman. They reportedly called on the government to deport the Israeli ambassador and end all political relations with the Jewish state. From there to Iraq and Pakistan, where protesters hit the streets and set fire to Israeli and American flags. Marches continued in a show of solidarity with Palestinians, with thousands joining in both Middle Eastern countries. All right, there you go. There you go. So this is uh, more footage of Gaza being bombarded. Let's watch that for just a second.
So that's it. That's it. So let's just get into my comments here in, in just for a minute. Because the reason why I wanted to include the Tucker Carlson thing about COVID is there's people to this day that won't talk to me or speak to me because of my stance on not getting the, uh, the jab. And uh, my stance on uh, that Fauci was a criminal because uh, he was a hero. He still is a hero to the Democrats. Uh, and so I just, I, I, I just, it just makes me want to sick up when I get around those people and they, they want to sick up around me. And so now my stance on Ukraine, I told you that Ukraine uh, didn't stand a chance uh, against Russia. And of course, I didn't know it'd be so one-sided. I thought that after arming Ukraine since 2014, and especially with full NATO support, that Ukraine uh, would do better uh, with the war. But no, it's, um, well, we got between 500,000 to a million uh, dead Ukrainians at this point. Uh, and I, every day I'm seeing numbers upwards of between uh, 100 to 500 casualties at this point. Because uh, the weather is coming in, uh, this is going to end. Well, the offensive has been long over anyway, uh, but it's going to end an offensive on either side. And then, of course, I just read a couple of um, replies here. This is what happens when an empire loses their grip on the world and can't let go. Let us pray they don't destroy the whole world as the United States is destroyed. So we are being destroyed, no doubt about it. We've got, uh, what, 8 million or... I think it's 8 million illegal immigrants here. How many of those are terrorist groups that are just waiting to be activated? Uh, we're going to see fires burning across the United States. We're already seeing it in the cities for the most part. Uh, already, Israel is destroying Gaza. This will uh, unite the Arab world against Israel. Nikki Haley is a warmongering neocon lunatic uh, who will help bring the world to its destruction. Let us pray she never gets in power. Uh, I'll just get to a couple of my tweets. That's just... Uh, my replies. So here's my post. Uh, now we know why the arsenal of, of billions of dollars of unit, yes, military equipment was left behind by the Marxist corrupt Democrats. Look to Israel. And what I was pointing out there, there's all that equipment now has ended up in Israel. I mean, in uh, Gaza. RT, amid ongoing Hamas Israeli fighting, states across Northern Africa and Middle East have seen support of Gaza. Massive rallies were held in Morocco and Jordan. We got that on the video. So, and then, of course, I've got a poll out. What do you think now? Will Israel Democrats reconsider their support of Ukraine as, an, as, as Israel is at war? And the answer is no. The Democrats will not reconsider their support of Ukraine. I'll finish off. Uh, well, not finish off. Let's just get this. I don't know what you had in mind, but here we stand on opposing sides. Let's go to war! Let's go to war! Let's go to war! Everywhere in the world, let's go to war with China! Let's go to war with Palestine! Let's go to war with Ukraine! Let's go to war in Syria! Let's go to war with North Korea! Let's go to war! Let's go to war! That's the theme of the neocons in the United States of the day's Congress. Let's go to war! Let's go to war! And let's finish it off! This is Tucker Carlson on Ukraine. Common sense. Whenever you think of the war against Russia or the war in Ukraine, um, and I'm, I'm doing a debate, or, and I think everyone involved most people on both sides have good intentions. I'm not attacking anybody. If you've got views opposite mine, it doesn't make you a traitor or a bad person in my view. Honest people reach different conclusions very often, including there. However, every person in America who I ever met was convinced for the first year and a half that Ukraine was winning, was on its way to winning. We just need to send more material and they would win. The view for the rest of the world is like, that's insane because they're looking at the fundamentals. It's not even a political question. Russia has a hundred million more people than Ukraine. Russia is the largest landmass in the world. Russia has some of the deepest energy reserves on planet Earth, and Russia also has massive industrial capacity. And Ukraine has none of those things. What? And you're telling me, with the help of NATO, which doesn't actually exist in the sense that most Americans think that it does, is going to beat Russia? I mean, however much you may fervently want that, that's not going to happen. And I can promise you that no smart person outside our borders ever for one second thought that was going to happen. And yet every person I know, including very smart foreign policy wonks, that somehow convinced themselves it was going to happen. Now, 
What that suggests to me is a systemic problem where we're not capable of reaching obvious conclusions about things anymore. And that's death. Hmm. Like ideology aside, opinions aside, if you can't even assess basic, like Wikipedia level information, who's got the advantage? A hundred million more people? Okay. No, they're gonna, they're gonna lose. We're gonna topple Putin. Um, it makes, that makes me really worry. Not just the decisions we're making, but the way that we're making them hmm. concerns me a lot. Peace out. Stay free. You can run on for a long time, run on for a long time, run on for a long time. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Go tell that globalist liar, that Democrat idiot writer, that rhino rambler, that nuclear war gambler, that backbiting U.S. politician. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down.